Hi everybody, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining our YouTube channel. What we do at Golf Show Chiropractic is to educate you guys on the importance of functionality, right? And functionality can happen when you're young, right? Most of the time when we're young, we don't have any issues with it. But when you get older, functionality becomes very, very important. So today, uh, we have a video that we're gonna be um, walking you guys through uh, with Donnie, she's one of my older patients, and we have a lot of them down in Florida. So Donnie, she's very, very active. She does a lot of tennis. Um, she's one of those people that uh, she's like my idol. You know, I want to be when I get older, because you know, she there's nothing that she would back away from. So um, one first thing that we do for for Donnie is to ensure that she has great hip flexibility and hip mobility. Now. A lot of times, hip mobility and hip flexibility will discourage people, or lack thereof, of hip mobility or hip functionality, uh, will, will oftentimes uh, diminish people from being active. Now, why is that so? Because when well, you don't have range of motion, uh, your hips, which are your weight-bearing joints, oftentimes will be very, very painful for the patients when they are um, actually on weight-bearing, which uh, pretty much doesn't matter if you're walking, playing sports, or uh, even sitting, you're putting pressure on your hips, and it oftentimes will give people a lot of pain. Some of the things that we really strive for is to increase the range of motion in the hips. So as you see in the videos here, I'm stretching the hips out very adamantly. We're putting some pressure um, on the IT band uh, and also on the piriformis uh, muscle. But again, a lot of pressure around the hip area to really release a lot of tight muscles um, around the hip area to give them more mobility. So in addition to the hip flexibility, we're also attacking the hip flexor muscle. When patients have hip flexor tightness or hip flexor spasm, they oftentimes will have a lot of low back pain in addition to uh, all sorts of pelvic uh, referral pain. So when patients have increase in range of motion and hip flexibility, you know for the fact that their low back will be oftentimes will, will be much more mobile and they will be able to put more stress on the low back area. So this is one of the things that we work with Donnie on is trying to stretch and trying to relieve the hip flexors. As you can see here, when I'm raising her leg up here, uh, it really does put a lot of pressure on the low back if the hip flexor does not give in. And as you can see here, uh, after we work on her, her hip flexibility in increases, the, the hip flexor flexibility increases and she's able to raise her leg up higher. And that takes a lot of stress away from the low back. Oftentimes people will, will talk about, you know, tight hamstrings, right? Everybody always talk about tight hamstrings and creating back pain but hip flexor create a lot of low back pain and oftentimes it's debilitating. One of the most important things um, regarding hip flexor flexibility is that it allows you to have better posture. If your low back is not arching properly due to tight hip flexors, people often would bend forward at the waist and they're gonna be stooping forward and that also will cause a lot of uh, abnormal stress and abnormal pressure all the way up to the mid back and all the way up to the neck. So oftentimes you can get neck pain that is caused from tight hip flexors. So that's one of the things, again, we really are adamant about trying to help patients to realize that in their normal course of care. Annie, of course, is an average um, tennis player, and here we're stretching out her shoulder, particularly her um, elbow and her shoulder, okay? Uh, with, the, with, the, with regard to the shoulder flexibility-wise, patients oftentimes will have a lot of chest pain, okay? Particularly tennis player, of course, everything is um, chest dominant because they're hitting the ball forward, right? This way, so the tight chest muscle oftentimes will round their shoulder forward. So then what we're trying to do is open that shoulder up. But along with the tight chest, uh, tennis player also can have a lot of tendonitis on the lateral portion and also on the medial portion of their forearm. So uh, as you can see, when I'm trying to stretch it out, we're trying to open up the chest and also, again, have her straighten out the elbow to stretch a lot of flexion muscle in the forearm. Um, and here, also too, I'm putting a lot of pressure and doing some malfunction release um, and choker point release on the medial portion of the elbow to give her more flexibility. Um, and again, that's really important, not only how they function, how they perform, uh, which is what she wants, you know, but she doesn't realize that the reason we're doing this is to inhibit uh, tearing of the fibers of the tendon, which would then lead to tendonitis. So those of you guys out there that have a lot of tendonitis, if you stretch your chest out, if you put pressure and release your elbow, uh, it's going to help a lot to enable you to handle more stress in that region, uh, particularly if you're, again, a tennis player 
um, the golfer, you know, any good guys and gals out there who play a lot of throwing sports, you know, like baseball or softball, it is a must to really help to open up your chest and, and really put a lot of pressure on your forearm to keep it flexible. So some of my takeaway for, you know, this video with um, Donnie is that range of motion is, you know, one of the most important things that I want you guys to realize when it comes to performance, right? Most people think about strength with regard to performance, but I want you guys to think of range of motion first or flexibility. Uh, in my practice, when I talk about the premise of good function and good performance, we always start out with good flexibility first, okay? Then leads to good function, then leads to performance. So if you don't have the flexibility, you can't have proper function and you cannot perform very well at all, no matter what you do. It doesn't matter, again, if you're walking your kids or walking your dog or playing tennis. Uh, another takeaway take that uh, I want you guys to have in this is that no matter what age it is, you can have optimal functionality, okay? You have to work for it. You have to have people do things for you. I don't care if it's trainers, massage therapists, chiropractor, physical therapists. Get out there, have get somebody that you trust um, to go through and, main, and help to maintain the, the function that you have. And if you have dysfunctional uh, range of motion or dysfunctional joints, have them work on that and have them find out what that is so you can really address those things. And remember, if you don't address them, you're not gonna be able to cure anything at all with regard to neuromusculoskeletal condition. When it comes to neuromusculoskeletal condition, if you leave it alone, it atrophies, it shortens, it gets worse, okay? So leaving it alone, even when you have pain or don't have pain, either way, it only will get worse for you. So thanks everyone for watching our channel. Uh, really appreciate it. That's how we, um, you guys help us grow. Uh, you guys <clears throat> have any questions or any topics that you guys want us to incorporate into our channel, please let us know. And thank you again for watching us.